somewhat lost in the political news here in the United States, three French citizens were brutally murdered in a Catholic basilica in Nice, France last week. These killings came only two weeks after the beheading of a French history teacher who showed his class caricatures of Mohammed to teach them about the freedom of speech. And just this week, a terrorist with ties to ISIS killed four people in Vienna, Austria. What is driving this new wave of terrorist activity in Europe? And is it coming to North America? Joining me now with analysis is foreign policy expert and author of The Choice, Trump versus Obama, Biden in U.S. foreign policy, Walid Ferris. Walid, why are we seeing this spike in attacks in France, starting with the beheading of that French teacher in October and followed up by these attacks in this basilica in Nice, featuring, incidentally, another beheading during Mass? Well, Raymond, there are reasons in the Mediterranean. There is a much higher, much bigger picture to the struggle happening. It explains why these jihadists have been uh, you know, activated, in a sense, because it's happening in France, it's happening in Austria. But it's also happening in the Middle East, in Libya and elsewhere. There is a machine that basically mobilized these individuals and sent them against France in this case, or sent mm. them against the, uh, the foes and the enemies of the Muslim Brotherhood and their project in the region. Yeah. The same day as that Nice attack, uh, incidentally, Walid, there was an attempted attack in Avignon. What is driving this? Uh, is there a pattern here that we need to be aware of? Look, of course, France has a jihadi problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Since 2005, all these attacks, I mean, we remember all in 2015, the horrific attacks in Paris. So there is a demography of jihadists, of trained jihadists or less mm -hmm. trained jihadists. And France is, is meeting them now on their national soil. But there is something else, Raymond. France is also busy gathering the Europeans to respond to the expansion of the uh, Turkish government of Mr. Erdogan, who is an ally of the jihadists. And in many of his speeches, he really attacked uh, the French president Macron and attacked France and its role. So it is very possible mm -hmm. that some of these jihadists are listening to those speeches, very strong speeches, and acting accordingly. Mm. In the French attacks, these Islamic extremists specifically targeted Catholics and churches. Why is that? Because the Catholic Church is seen by the jihadists in their indoctrination process, and I've read a lot of the lectures mm -hmm. given by the ideologues to those uh, jihadists during the training, uh, describing the Catholic Church as, guess what, responsible for the Crusades, mm. as the organism. <laughs> they, think, they still think they are in the, in the medieval times, so they want to punish today's Catholic Church for events that took place more than a thousand years ago. Wow. No, I remember we visited Paris last summer, and we walked into this church, and the entire side wall of the church was torched inside and out. You remember that burning that happened? Of course, uh, they're, they're, we've, we've seen a number of these arsons at churches throughout France, but now they're moving on to killing and beheading congregants. I mean, this is getting serious, and I'm amazed by the, the pretty universal silence on this. There's been no reaction from the international community, and you've almost heard no reporting of it here in the United States. How do countries in Europe, like France, attempt to assimilate the Muslims who come into their countries? And uh, is it a problem of balkanization that occurs in these immigrant communities? I mean, I noticed in Paris there were areas that were predominantly Muslim that th the Parisians just didn't go. They didn't go there. Yeah, all of these above matters that you mentioned, Raymond, are true, are reality. And what is ironic is that France is one of the most secular mm. uh, governments in, in all of Europe. I mean, they are almost anti-clerical since the French uh, Revolution. So France is not really your typical Catholic country. They are right. Catholic. The majority of Christians there are Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, they are facing off with the terrorists. So that's something the French are doing and doing well. But they are failing, like we are, and everybody in the, uh, in the Western world, in the war of ideas. Because mm -hmm. the war of ideas is fought on campuses, both in America and in France. And there are so many apologists who are saying, no, no, these are not jihadists. These are people doing yoga, and it's us, our problem. We are colonial, and it's our foreign policy. The mm -hmm. same thing. Who is funding this kind of perspective? Yeah. the actual petrodollar regime in the yeah. Middle East. Wow. Uh, in the wake of these French attacks, and you bring this up, the, the war of ideas, I noticed an AP headline from November 1st, and it read, French Muslims stigmatized by attacks 
feel under pressure. Now, the media always seems preoccupied with showing sympathy toward the Muslim community in the wake of these attacks. What's the message that that sends to Westerners? And uh, what does it tell us about the threats we face in the idea department? Look, first of all, we learned throughout experience and time that when you read this narrative, it's not just a narrative written by somebody on a desk at AP or AFP or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. This is Muslim Brotherhood narrative that has been created on campuses by professors who are linked to Qatari funding or linked to petrodollar funding. So it has a purpose, which is to cover up for uh, these jihadists. But on the bigger scale, Raymond, you know, the use of the term these are the Muslims in Kafr is wrong because a majority of Muslims today follow the line of the Arab coalition with the UAE and Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and Egypt. All of these countries, the majority of the Arab Muslims are fighting the jihadists. Mm -hmm. So what the jihadists try to do via their helpers in the West to say, we represent the Muslims. No, they do not represent the, all of the Muslims. They mm -hmm. represent themselves as Marxist Leninists yeah. would represent themselves and not the Orthodox or the Catholic when you, when you mention petrodollars, be specific. What countries are you talking about? Well, in the past, it was most of the countries in the Gulf, and I've spoken with many of their officials. Mm -hmm. They would send that money to the West, to universities, to you know, foundations, thinking right. that they are supporting uh, the communities. But who was organizing that money and that activity? Mm -hmm. The Muslim Brotherhood, basically. And, of course, their cousins of the Iranian regime. Mm. Now, earlier this week, a Muslim man with ties to ISIS shot four people to death in Vienna, Austria. He was armed with an automatic rifle, fake explosive vest. He was eventually killed by police. The U.K. is raising its terror level to severe as a result of this incident. Is there any indication that these attacks were related directly or indirectly to the attacks in France? Organically, meaning can we prove that the individuals in Austria are in touch, were in touch? No, and I, most likely less. But can we prove that the whole movement, the whole narrative that started before these attacks has inspired them? Absolutely, because those attacks started after many speeches were delivered in the Middle East and by TV stations and by radio stations and online. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest challenges that the United States faces when it comes to confronting Islamic extremists inside the United States itself? And I know this election is still in suspension. Let's assume that Biden and Harris prevail here. What might the picture look like going forward? You know, Raymond, exactly as it was between 2009 and 2016. This is the return of the Obama foreign policy if uh, there is a Biden um, administration, which means an apology towards these movements uh, and looking more into what the United States has made in, ten in terms of mistakes in foreign policy, attitude, racism, Islamophobia. So you're going to hear a lot of this for the following uh, four years. But that, unfortunately, is going to encourage the jihadists. If the jihadists see that the government that is facing them, including and mostly the United States, is not paying attention to them, is not, you know, giving culture and education to their own population, Americans, they will do more. And you can compare between the attacks that occurred during the eight years of the Obama-Biden administration and those that occurred during the Trump administration, mm -hmm. and you can have your answer way more during the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. uh, final question. Uh, President Trump has broken barriers. I think people on both sides, including Joe Biden during the campaign, conceded that what the president was able to engineer in the Middle East between Israel and Bahrain, Israel and the UAE, uh, moving the uh, uh, our, our concept to Israel. All of that is really groundbreaking. What might happen to those initiatives and the relative peace we're now seeing against Iran that's been established by the Trump administration in the Middle East? Are you worried that should Biden move into the Oval Office, those gains might be erased? I am very worried. And actually, this is a chapter in the book, the, in my last book, uh, the whole architecture which actually was launched by President Trump uh, in May of 2017 when he went to Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, and addressed more than 50 heads of Arab and Muslim countries and asked them and told them, drive the jihadists out, counter that ideology. This was the most significant mm -hmm. action by a U.S. president since 9-11, basically. And after that, we saw how all these uh, countries, not just UAE and Bahrain, Sudan, I mean, Sudan, which was accused of many uh, actions against their minorities, they all came and then signed an agreement, peace agreement with the Israelis. My concern is 
not that President Biden, uh, President Biden would cancel them, but would put pressure on those allies of the United States, as the Obama administration has done, to force them to go towards what? The Iran deal. That could collapse all our peace processes that we have engineered. We will leave it there. For more reading, The Choice, Trump versus Obama-Biden in U.S. Foreign Policy by Walid Ferris is available at bookstores everywhere and online. Walid,